Antonina Burachenko is a graduate of the Institute of Holistic Nutrition here in Vancouver. Uh, she's a regular spokesperson for holistic medicine. And in her work with clients, you know, Antonina's mission is to educate and demystify an overwhelming amount of puzzling health information to inspire transformation and support people's healing journey using advanced nutrition research and orthomolecular science. Antonina teaches preventative health care here at the Institute of Holistic Nutrition in Vancouver. And I am blessed to know her and honored to work with her. Um, so without further ado, let's hand it over to Antonina. Thank you very much, Jason. Hi, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, it's so nice to be a part of uh, all of our campuses uniting in, 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 this, in this format. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, it's an honor. The conversation and the subject that I was asked to speak on was um, pretty much the subject that I would love to present on and probably one of my mm -hmm. overarching main, um, I guess, um, goals in, in what I teach, what I teach to public and or whether I teach to students and, and um, is to really educate them. And, and um, as Jason mentioned, in one of my things is I am really passionate about demystifying and making simple making information simple and usable. So the client actually understands um, instead of feeling like they don't hold the power, instead of feeling like they've been coached and told what to do, them really understanding why they're doing something. So they stick to it. And um, it is very confusing out there. Uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of names uh, for diseases. There are a lot of conditions. There are a lot of complex uh, tools and, and treatment options and, and and protocols that are usually utilized in both allopathic and naturopathic medicine. But it really all comes down to understanding cellular function. It would it doesn't really matter what condition we work with and what label it has been given because there's over 1200 12,500 of labels now. And it really comes down to understanding what is behind all of this. So we need to zoom in on the most kind of predominant or the, 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 the main facet of all the conditions of all the diseases of all the symptoms, and that would be cellular health. So the name of my talk is Cellular Matrix, because we will be talking about, um, you know, demystifying, give me one second, I'm just trying to put the, um, and understanding the the cellular function, understanding what cells need. And when we do, when we understand how to treat the cell properly, how to feed it, how to clean it, and how to ensure that it functions um, in its ultimate and optimal, um, we will enjoy health. We will enjoy a reversal of conditions that, um, or symptoms or dysfunction that we have been witnessing. And, um, in the course that I teach, so I teach preventative healthcare course, and I love that course. And I guess because I am, um, um, you know, I guess biased, but there was, there, was, there was a reason why I agreed or chose to work with the, um, with the um, IHN and the incredibly faculty and the management team is because this course allows me to express um, what I have learned in school and everything that I've seen in practice and everything that I personally understand to be true about health. And it's a really fantastic course. It is eight um, lectures long and it covers so many different conditions. We talk about, in that course, we talk about the function of the digestive system, the function of the brain, the function of elimination and detoxification in, of the body, the function of digestive conditions and how to heal them naturally, the naturopathic and nutritional approach, um, insulin resistant metabolic syndrome, diabetes mellitus, so type one and type two. We're talking about asthma, multiple sclerosis, bone conditions of different kinds, cardiovascular conditions, and of course, cancer. That's the last lecture and I usually have incredible guests join us at the last lecture that are in the field and have been successful in the field uh, for a very long time. And um, so the course is very comprehensive. We talk about symptomology, pathology, understanding of the disease from allopathic and naturopathic perspective. And then we go into discussing everything that the person and the practitioner, a well-rounded practitioner can do to help that person heal. And um, and it's a very different approach than allopathic medicine uses. And it's a very holistic approach. And it's important that we integrate understandings of both to provide the best support for our clients. And that's what students are um, you know, educated to do. Um, the premise of all of this, we, whatever we're doing, whether it's um, our you know, day to day choices in life or whether we choose a specific um, you know, treatment for whatever we have acquired and dealing with, we can look at this from two perspectives. We can address those things either uh, with substances that are um, suppressing 
compromising, um, in some ways um, down-regulating, or substances or um, you know, uh, choices that will be very life-giving and very supportive and very healing. And so and the, uh, I always talk about how the major reasons for why we're sick are usually, um, you know, because there, there's two really, the overarching that there's two, that we're either very toxic in substances that do not belong in the body, or we are very, uh, you know, or we're very deficient in substances that the body is made from. And that can apply to any condition um, that, that you have ever heard of or dealt with yourself or in your family or friend environment for that matter. So we are toxic in things that we don't need in the body and we are deficient in things that belong or need it for the body to self heal, to regenerate and to function properly. The body is meant to receive. And so in terms of healing, the big difference from naturopathic and nutritional approach, orthomolecular approach in comparison to allopathic is then when we are addressing a condition, we look at all the substances that the body is made from. So instead of using synthetic chemistry, chemistry that doesn't, the body doesn't really understand, uh, it might be upregulating, downregulating and doing something, but the body is actually foreign to the body. We are focusing on using the substances that the body is made from, that the body knows how to use, that the body understands and will have an easy time of working with. So we are always using the, the energy and the, uh, and the modalities and the tools that the, uh, that the body will be uh, in coherence, in, in, a good, in a good alignment with. So the, um, in allopathic medicine approaches, of course, very often is you know, antibiotic, antihistamines, antivirals, so things that are suppressing and eliminating. But we need to look at a much bigger picture. It may be some answers can be found there, but we definitely need to integrate and look way beyond. So from natural options, we are going to uh, look at nutrient-dense foods, we are going to look at probiotics, we are going to look at phytonutrients, minerals, vitamins, antioxidants, amino acids, oxygen, glucose, things that are actually feeding the cells and, and a lot and mis misconstrued or misunderstood a lot of the times. So what does the cell need every, every moment of the day? And, um, and use it in a therapeutic amounts, meaning that the amounts in which they're actually going to be effective, not because very often nutrition is used in an insignificant in, in amount, for example. So if we are, have a condition and we have a treatment and a drug is used, the drug is always used in a therapeutic amount and the amount in which that will um, change the symptomology, upregulate or downregulate something. We need to look the same way at the nutrition. And a lot of the times, the amount of nutrients or the volume or the, the value and the quality and the variety of those nutrients, they have to be done in a way in which it's actually therapeutically viable and when it can upregulate, downregulate, heal, detox, or do something we, we actually can witness the result before and after, not just a general dose, not just, but actually in, in a way that is extremely effective knowing and that's, that's, that science has proven to, to work. So um, once we look at the body, look at the human um, a physiology, understand the environment of our client, we have to ask a lot of really smart questions. A practitioner, a nutritional practitioner, practitioner that works with integrative medicine and understands um, the, the environment and how that impacts the human physiology, pathology, and um, emotional and uh, you know, physical, physical environment, all of that is very, very, um, is, is very comprehensive. So we need to look at um, what does the person go back to, whether, it, you know, from the time that they've seen us, um, do they go back to a home environment and work environment and day-to-day -day environments that are complementary to their well-being and healing, or are they sabotaging in some way? So do we check for molds in their environment? Do we look at what they're consuming? So the body is made of 75% water. Are they consuming the high quality water? Is it clean, pure? Is it healing in the sense? Is it detoxifying? Is it, or is it causing more problem? Is there sufficient amount of that taken every day? Or is the person mostly dehydrated and using diuretic substances that dehydrate it further? Um, do we change, you know, do the, how is their uh, just overall principles and, and lifestyle um, 
I guess habits are, uh, do they change their bedding often? Do we look at their food, you know, we look at their food storage, we look at their uh, food quality, we look at their, um, you know, pretty much everything they come in contact with, what the kind of cosmetics they're using, what are they showering in, um, what, what kind of, you know, other substances are they consuming, what is the electromagnetic exposure and the radiation in the environment, um, and things like that. So all of those in some, in one way or another, are going to be contributing to their, to their experience. And that is a very important conversation because um, a lot of times what I see in public or in, in you know, conversing with students, uh, students understand that because anybody who's open to holistic medicine and has come to study, they already have in some ways are open to the idea that we need to be very careful and take personal responsibility and, and verify and check on the substances that we incorporate into our lifestyle every day. So it's a fairly easy conversation with students, but it is important that our students have the tools and ways to explain and communicate how important it is to eat clean how important it is to put whatever you put on your body I always we always say if you can't eat it don't put it on your body um, you know what are we uh, spraying on our kitchen counters what are we washing our dishes with what are we washing our clothing with uh, that it's then in contact with our body constantly uh, what are we consuming through all of this uh, exposures fumes exposures and things like that and what many don't understand is that I remember immigrating to Canada, assuming that everything um, that I see on the store shelf is safe and healthy because it wouldn't have been there otherwise. And I assume that the government is doing a good enough job or the government regula re regulation agency are doing a good job at eliminating and cleaning up the environment or not eliminating toxins from our supplies of food and, and other, and other, and other uh, household chemicals. And that they are very well tested, and then they are very well studied, and then they are non-toxic or um, or har harmless to the body. Unfortunately, I was wrong. That was a very naive approach. That was a very naive assumption. And I would say 95% of the population have that assumption. Um, we assume that whatever's on the shelf is healthy. We don't understand the history and the fact that over 30 years ago. The, you know, the substances have just been grandfathers. They found there's thousands of chemicals, over 62,000 of chemicals out there that are, that are being used, but they, you know, we don't have the time to study it. We don't have the ability to uh, not only study them individually, but also in synergy, and we don't have the money or whatever the reasons are. Let's just grandfather and assume that they're safe. And then, you know, and then, and then, and then fix it as we go along. That was the decision that was made then. So a lot of our chemicals, a lot of, uh, a lot of things that we exposed to ac actually have never been studied, have never been properly vetted uh, before they've been put on and allowed on the shelf. So it is really important that we understand that we have to do that. We have to do our due diligence. We have to do our research. We have to um, be good at understanding the differences and finding companies and investing with a dollar in the companies that understand um, the value of, um, you know, keeping the environment clean, environment around you, your body, and things like that. So, and they respect your body and provide you with the best possible raw materials in your products. So um, just, I guess the important thing is understand and remember that the stuff that is on the shelf is far from being properly studied and vetted to be used and you need to do your homework um, to choose the best and then you need to do a good job at communicating and educating others that they probably should be a little bit more cautious and 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 um curious and integrate you know and understand uh that as well another thing is there's you know for example i i see a lot of girls talking about fragrances and wanting to you know asking about uh which cologne somebody's using and going and shopping and just christmas is coming again so there's a lot of uh, purchases there's a lot of habits that we have in where it is socially accepted for us to to put a lot of um synthetic chemistry in our body and in our environment uh, not understanding that there's over three thousand different uh chemicals that we called or label as fragrances and so if we see the fragrance on the bottle it is it is it's just it's just a a facade it's just a one letter uh you know one one word essentially that covers and could be hiding literally thousands of chemicals that could be disrupting to your hormone system to your cellular function to your to your overall well-being and that happens it, it might not it might not cause any damage or issue in a short period of time but what if we're using those toxic perfumes or certain fragrances or certain chemistry and chemicals in our environment but we use them for the last 10 20 30 years and they're accumulating in our body and in our environment for for 
for uh, for a very long time and the body will be able to deal with it at certain points and then it will get overwhelmed and it would kind of give up so we need to understand the toxic load and where it's coming from we definitely need to understand in the quality of food. And very often, um, a lot of times people just like, well, it says natural on the label, or it says this, or I trust that. You have to understand that there is no regulation for the world natural. There are regulation for the world organic. So um, do we buy organic from China? Maybe we want to be careful. But what about the agencies in Canada and America and some Euro you know, European countries? Maybe we can find um, organic label or the quality, you know, or a specific you know the products that uh, that adhere to uh, to a lot of a lot of different rules and guidances. And a lot of times you can go to farmers market and you can have a conversation with your farmer and and actually learn they might not be able to afford the organic label. It's really sad that we have to pay and prove that our food is clean, but we do not have to prove and pay. Um, uh, you know, protect, you know, essentially uh, poisoning or, uh, or putting a lot of, um, uh, you know, incompat incompatible chemistry in our food. So it does cost a lot to label and certify, but we could go to a farmer's market and find a farmer who doesn't, um, you know, get a certification, but the farmer who understands the quality, um, understand, respects the soil, respects the produce, respects the labor of love, and, and creates products that, um, you know, and uh, and, and, and provides them to you because it respects you and your health as well with, uh, you know, making sure that the products that you are, um, that you're buying from them are clean and healing, holistic or adding to the value, um, your just overall uh, well-being. So organic labeling um, is, is quite, um, is quite, um, um, What's the right word? Um, it, there's a lot. There's a lot to it. So I'd strongly recommend that you understand. And if you and I know in our society it's very easy to question. And a lot of times I hear that I don't trust organic. Organic is a big money grab. And I would agree. It has. And it there. There are some um, you know unethical companies everywhere. There are unethical farmers everywhere. There are, but uh, th that's the only thing we have for checks and balances, and it's up to us to hold them accountable to the standard. So we have we ha we have to be a part of that. We have to make sure that those standards are, are kept and respected, um, because that's the only way for us to know today that something is clean and non uh, and uh, you know. Um, and affected with was a whole slew of different uh, biochemistry that is, that is toxic and, and unbeneficial. So it is important that we uh, have those conversations, that we understand the quality. And when we look at uh, our produce, like a lot of times people say, well, organic food is expensive. Yes, it is more expensive than uh, inorganic food, that food that, that has um, had a lot of bio, has a lot of biochemistry that's toxic, but there's value to it. Sometimes it could be 20, 30% more expensive. And I'll find, and you probably all noticed that 10 years ago, the gap between organic and inorganic was very large. And uh, but uh, today, there is sometimes a very small one. And sometimes you can find really good deals in organic and, and clean produce and food, for example. And um, all of that has to do with the, uh, you know, bigger supply, bigger demand and bigger supply, more and more uh, farmers are uh, transitioning and converting to cleaner practices. And so uh, we get to benefit from it. And the more people, the more we educate, the more people um, are buying clean and respecting clean food and support those farmers, support local economies, uh, the better shift and the bigger shift we're going to see. When we look at the nutritional value of organic versus inorganic food, clean food versus dirty food, or what I call the clean food organic food is what our ancestors used to eat. It's our grandparents. That's what they used to leave, be, eat before the 1930s, before agriculture was taking over by, um, by uh, the industry uh, that uses a lot of chemistry that is incompatible with that was our was our health. So if you look at the table, you will see that organic versus inorganic conventional food, and you will see a drastic difference in nutrient value. So you may be paying 10, 20, 30 percent, sometimes 50 percent more, but you might be getting a thousand, a hundred to a thousand times more of specific nutrient. So um, it is really important that we understand that distinction. And another thing when we're eating uh, organic or clean food that you grow in your garden is that we are also, not only we're getting more nutrition, we are now not uh, exposed to all the biochemistry that I told you is, is highly compromising. So um, unfortunately, inorganic conventional food should be putting a label. It's not us should be putting a label that is organic and clean. It's the, you know, it's the other uh, you know, conventional food that should have a label listing all the chemicals that are on that food. 
And it is very unfortunate that that's not what's happening in our society and that's happening in our agriculture. So again, for the body, not only have you not in a conventional food, not only have you not got your, you know, all of your vitamins and minerals that every cell needs, you also got all these chemicals that now the body has to get rid of. So, and how is the body going to get rid of all this biochemistry, the toxic biochemistry? The body is going to have to spend the minerals, vitamins, phytonutrients, water, all of these good molecules that all of your cells need for functioning is going to have to use them to detoxify you from all the synthetic chemistry. So not only you didn't get what you needed, you also lost a lot of what you've had that was good. So it is definitely, it's a, it's a catch 22. It's not, you might be saving financially, but you, you're you not in the long term. Um, the school is um, very good at educating in regards to clean foods, uh, you know, um, ancient foods, uh, things that are actually have very um, you know, positive and um, supportive biochemistry, and that has a lot of nutrition versus the food that has been significantly tampered with and altered, whether it's, um, uh, you know, uh, synthesized in some way, whether it's genetically engineered, whether it's, uh, you know, bred out out of all of its uh, maybe nutrient values, but just has a really beautiful look um, and a very good sellable, sellable uh, shape and form. But we really need to get down to understanding the value food, every single bite, everything you put in your body becomes your biochemical, becomes a biochemical reaction. So it's either supporting you or working against you. Um, there's lots of conversations about love coffee. So don't get me wrong. Don't, <laughs> but um, coffee has to be, um, you know, understood for what it is. Like we, we grow, coffee is grown in third party, third party, um, a third, um, third world countries with a lot of chemicals. Coffee is the, um, is the crop that is uh, that is that tends to uh, build a lot of uh, uh, grow a lot of fungus on it. That's something that we cannot see. It's a mycotoxins and mycofungus, mycofungus. So it's important for us to understand that whatever we're consuming every day could potentially cause mineral deficiency. So we get, for example, magnesium loss with um, uh, the um, alcohol consumption, uh, the, uh, you know, smoking with coffee consumption, we lose a lot of the minerals. Uh, magnesium is one of the major ones. So again, and stress, of course, diminishes it. So we have to look at all of our lifestyle choices and what can be, what it can be doing with us. Is it okay to have a coffee once in a while? Yes. Is it okay? Is it best to when you actually find and get organic coffee that's mycotoxin free and test it? Absolutely much better than drinking anything that you find, um, you know, in, in the regular store. So we need to understand the quality of what we're consuming, where it comes from, and how and how it impacts us on a day-to-day -day basis. And coffee has become the number one drug in North America. We're taking it every day. And I always tell my clients and my students, if you have a person that's telling you, I cannot function without coffee, this should be a red flag to any person. Like, it's okay to have it for, um, you know, experience, for joy. But if you can't function without it, you need to look into what are the um, so what, what, why, like, what is that? Uh, what's an underlying issue? If you can't function without it, maybe your thyroid, maybe your adrenals, maybe your liver, maybe your overall uh, nutrient deficiencies, maybe you're dehydrated. There could be so many things. If you can't function without it, there's something terribly wrong and you're self-medicating to just uh, survive through the day, to get through the day. But what is it creating long-term? Are you addressing a problem or are you creating a bigger one long-term? So that was just an example. Um, so our cellular matrix and what we need to know about uh, optimal health, we need to understand that um, the body has different types of cells. So it doesn't matter if it's a liver cell, um, it's a heart cell, if it's a red blood cell, if it's a brain cell, all of the cells need the elements that we talked about before, water, oxygen, um, amino acids, phytonutrients, minerals, and vitamins. And just in different proportions, there are different cells, but they need them in different varieties and different and different combinations. And um, we need to understand that um, when we give the body the natural substances and things that the cell require, there's less likely to be side effects. There will be cell, there will be, there will be uh, benefits, a lot of the time side benefits, what we call. So in nutrition and naturopathic medicine, when we prescribe substance, not prescribe, when, when we suggest and recommend and educate a client on the substances to take, those substances are not only addressing the condition you came with. So for example, let's say you have a fatigue and we recommended that you start taking B vitamins, start taking magnesium. 
those, uh, those elements are not going to only help with the fatigue and the organs that have been deficient and depleted and involved in the cascade that results in your symptoms. The, you also, when you give those nutrients, not only those organs are gonna benefit, all other organs and cellular structures are gonna benefit. So it's important to understand whatever you're taking uh, from the holistic perspective is not only helping in that one specific fashion, like facet of your, of your condition, that specific organ, that specific function or system, it's actually helping the whole body. And you will see everything improve. Not only fatigue will improve, you will see um, a lot of other things improve, digestion, everything, brain function. So all of those things will be side benefits as opposed to side effects that you see with uh, synthetic chemistry. As I've mentioned, there is over 12,500 different labels um, uh, that, that are given to us on the disease, but it all really comes down to cellular dysfunction, cellular malfunction. It's really one disease, cellular dysfunction, a cellular disease. When we start treating that, cell makes up a tissue, tissue make up an organ, organ makes up a system of organs, and the system of organ makes up the body. So when we start at the very lowest denominator, the smallest, we, we actually, we, it, it, it all grows out and, and covers everything. Um, they can, the theory that what we see, the, the germ theory that we see so um, well sold to us or propagated um, is, um, is really has a lot of flaw into it. So for example, we always look in nutritional naturopathic uh, approach and mindset, we look at the body as something that is a vibrant, is alive and something that if, it, if it's not in that state, it will start malfunctioning. So for example, um, we look at the blood as our kitchen, a uh, kitchen that delivers nutrients to all the cells. Cells, of course, need to eliminate byproducts. Anything that eats has to eliminate. Cells do not eliminate byproducts back into the blood. So they, they eliminate it into our sewer system, which is our lymphatic system. So our lymphatic system takes care of all these byproducts and the toxic and chemicals and pathogens. And so there's all these different systems in the body that we need to nurture. So we want the digestive system to take in good nutrients that happen to come into um, you know, cardiovascular, just, just get distributed through the bloodstream into our cells. We're feeding our cells and we need to make sure that the cells are able to properly detoxify and um and excrete cellular debris effectively, and then lymphatic system and all other systems that are employed to detoxify and clean the body. And that way we have this beautiful, perfect cycle. So we need to make sure that all the processes and the elements of all of our, you know, feeding our body and eliminating things that, that, that have been, um, that need to be excreted, that all of that works properly. If there's a big difference between a swamp and necrotic air and necrotic environment that you see in the swamp um, versus the river, the well flowing river, a river that is, um, you know, is moving. So the same things happens in your body. Do you want a, a like a swamp like environment where you're putrefying, fermenting, where you're toxic, where you're congested versus comparing yourself to being in an environment where you are, everything's moving well, everything's well hydrated, everything's well lubricated, digesting and, and functioning and eliminating properly. So we need to create an environment of that we need to be moving our lymphatic system. We need to make sure the cardiovascular system is healthy. We need to provide all the nutrients and elements so the body can do all this function. Um, it's like a dirty kitchen. If you leave dirty dishes, you're gonna see cockroaches and ants and everything else. But when you clean the dishes, all of that is gone. You can't just come in and start poisoning the, um, you know, using drugs, poisoning the cockroaches. And of course that, that would work temporarily, but then if you didn't clean the kitchen, if you didn't clean the dishes, there's gonna be more of them coming in and, and, and the much stronger pathogens and bugs and whatever else come in. And so that's gonna get invading, invade your house. So you need to make sure that all the body is, is um, that there's a clean environment and therefore you will not have any issues with pathogens, uh, viruses and bacteria. The body will be able to deal with that effectively. Um, there are multiple uh, streams in the body. So I've just alluded to it already. We have the blood, we have lymphatic and neurological. So we wanna make sure that all of them have a good vitality, have a really good um, you know, um, a function. And that will be through our lifestyle. So we need to restore all of them. We need to make sure everything is moving properly. Make sure you get out for a walk every day, get fresh air, breathe deeply so they activate all of your centers. Make sure that your lymphatic system is always working. A simple act of walking stimulates all of the lymphatic nodes. Uh, make sure that you're eating health, healthy and clean. Make sure that you have um, you know, a positive environment um, and um, 
and very healthy, uh, healthy relationships, work and personal. Uh, so these are the organs of elimination. We have the colon, the lungs, the cardiovascular, the skin, the liver. We wanna make sure that they function really well. And in school, in all of our courses and classes and preventative healthcare, you will be learning about how to uh, you know, stimulate all of this uh, function, how to stimulate organ function, how to stimulate their ability to self-clean, regenerate. Um, as I've mentioned before, uh, cellular malfunction happens because of the toxicity, because of dehydration, because of deprivation of oxygen, immunosuppressed. So, and a lot of things in, in um, I see people do and take, um, because a lot of times people will come after trying everything and then they'll come to a nutritionist or a naturopath asking for, um, you know, ask, asking for any help um, in, in, getting, in getting reversals or getting, getting support. And we really need to be good at educating them and eliminating um, all the chemicals from the environment. In, in general, I, I, you know, a day-to-day -day person in, uh, sorry, North American person on average, there's been an article published in the fact that we are exposed to 25,000 different chemicals in a day. So we wake up, we take a shower, is there chlorine in the shower? There is, um, we might be using soap that has a lot of parabens. We might be using toothpaste that has fluoride or parabens and all this SLAs. And so the point is, is that every day we're putting a creams on that have a bunch of chemicals over 80 different ingredients in some cases. Uh, we don't know that how they, well, we, we know that uh, personally they could be toxic, but then there's a synergy of them. So what's happening to all the biochemistry and what are we observing all the time? What are we putting in our body all the time? So by first and foremost, we could have 25,000 chemicals exposure today, and then the body can eliminate only 23,000. And the next day, there's going to be another 25,000 chemicals, the body can only eliminate 18,000. So again, we need to, the best thing is not only keep eliminating, as the best thing is to lower the chemical load and exposure to toxins and chemicals, and then upregulate our ability to be effective at cleaning and detoxifying. And that happens all the time. So um, the body wants to do it. You just need to give the body the environment and the tools to do it properly. Um, deep breathing, proper hydration, sunshine, and proton light. You have the cellular nutrition. So you want to properly provide all of the elements that all the cells need. Uh, clean environment um, in your home, in your work. Um, and the movement is really important, positive attitude and a good uh, friends, friends, family and purpose in the community. Um, so I hope, hoping I'm still on time, I don't see the time, uh, but modern med medicine logic is a pill for every ill, a drug for every bug, a vaccine injection for every infection, chemotherapy and radiation for every a mutation and when in doubt, cut it out. All we're saying, and people, people have a free will and the choice to do that, but all we're saying from naturopathic nutritional perspective, potentially you can be open to the idea that there's a lot more at play here. And then there are other ways of doing it, maybe a ways to combine, maybe a ways to just go another, another direction. You have a choice as the, you know, as a client, as a practitioner, somebody who's inspired to be healthy, you have a choice of how you, how you move ahead with, with what you're doing. And you need to understand the, um, the, the sheer power that your body has at self-healing and, uh, and support it in that endeavor. Thank you.